guys, it's Alyssa. I am here with another reading for you today. Um, first of all, before we get started, I want to apologize for the slightly janky setup. Uh, I am recording this just on my phone because my computer has been acting up and I don't really feel like dealing with it today. So, um, yeah, there's that. Uh, our reading topic today is going to be does this person, uh, your person of interest, think about you? Do they still think about you? And if so, what do they think about you or why? Um, so we're going to have four uh, groups to choose from. Um, I'm not going to put any like objects on top of the cards. Uh, today I want you guys to just look at like the imagery on the backs of the cards and use that to make your choice. Um, so I will show them to you up close. This is what we have for option one. This is option two. This is option three. And option four actually got two cards, um, and it's interesting because they're kind of similar. They both have trees on them. So that's what we got for group four. So um, I will give you guys a moment to make your choices, and then we'll get started. one. The card that you have is, life is a series of constantly shifting cycles. When we resist change, we resist the natural flow of life and create unnecessary stress. Go with the flow, you will be surprised where it leads. So that is your, I guess, theme for your reading today. Um, Let's pull some more cards and see what they would like to add to this. This pile of ones, person, still think about them and what and why. We have the Knight of Swords, the Ten of Pentacles, the Hierophant, Two of Pentacles. And the Nine of Pentacles. So, um, what I'm getting from these cards is that it's interesting because we have three Pentacles cards here. All three of these cards talk about balance and stability and security. It seems to me like whoever it is that you're thinking about, and also the Hierophant is another card that talks about those, uh, that, that is associated with those ideas. Um, so we have four cards here really saying similar things. Um, this is making me think that whoever you're uh, thinking about here um, is feeling very secure in themselves and it seems to me like they are very focused on what's going on in their life um, I feel as though this person this person has given up resisting this person has chosen to move forward in their life because 
it seems to me like when they were thinking about you, it was a source of stress for them. It was a source of anxiety for them. And I feel like now they, they've pretty much moved on. I don't really get the impression that they are thinking of you very much. Um, because these cards here are just talking to me so, so much about like being focused on oneself and what's going on in one's immediate surroundings and you know, those, that, that type of thing. So I'm inclined to say no. Uh, I don't really get the impression that they do think of you. If they do, it's, it's not real often and it's probably just like, you know, a fleeting thought, a memory. Um, the Knight of Swords is about clarity and insight. It's as if, and it also is uh, indicative of movement, right? It's like, um, again, they've, they've moved forward and they have, they have come to realize that whatever was going on with you, or I guess I should say they've come to the conclusion that whatever was going on with you, whatever that situation was, it is over, it's done. Um, and it seems like you know, it, it, it seems like they've found their own sense of balance and their own happiness and, you know, they're making, they're building their own life and they're happy with that. You know, the Nine of Pentacles, uh, this card I see as representing someone who is independent and self-sufficient and very focused on, you know, what's going on with them, you know, um, in a relationship reading, this is usually someone who's single and making the most of that time on their own. And I feel like that's what this person's doing. They're very focused on their own goals, their own circumstances. And I feel like they're not, they're not thinking a whole lot about you or, you know, what, whatever your relationship was in the past. It seems to me like they've... Uh, pretty much moved on from it. I feel like I want to pull... Let's see. Should I pull one of these? Yes, okay. I'm going to pull one or two of these cards and see if there's anything that they want to add. Although the message here seems pretty um, straightforward to me. Yeah, we have round and round coming out reversed. Um, so this card in the upright is about, like, cycles. It's it's about repeating cycles, never quite learning your lesson. Um, in the reverse position, though, I see this as breaking out of that cycle. You know, learning whatever it is that you're meant to learn um, and doing what you need to do to break out of some repetitive cycle that you've been going through. And, uh, you know, obviously this is general and... The circumstances uh, for all of you are going to be different. You know, your relationship with this person you're thinking of is going to uh, vary from person to person. But it seems to me like, at least from their perspective, okay, from their perspective, your relationship or your connection with them was repetitive. It was a little bit stifling. And... They've, they've broken out of that and they are, you know, pushing forward and not really looking back. And that doesn't, you know, I, I don't know you, <laughs> uh, the viewer. I don't know, um, this isn't to say that, you know, your relationship was bad necessarily or that you were a negative influence on this person's life. That's not what I'm implying, but that is the message that I'm getting. This is, this is kind of like their, this is your person's perspective on it. 
when they do have thoughts about this connection, that's kind of how they think of it, you know, as something that they broke out of and something that they, you know, something that is just, it's just in the past, you know, um, and it's, I, I'm not getting that they are, I'm not getting that they feel real strongly one way or another about it, you know, it's, it's not like they look back at your connection and think to themselves, like, oh, that was such a shitty time in my life, and, but, but I also don't feel like they think of it as being, I also don't think that they look back super fondly on it either, it's, it's more of just this energy of, like, ambivalence, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm, you know, I don't feel, I don't really feel one way or another, it's just, it's just something that was, you know? Um... And that could be just because maybe enough time has elapsed for them that they have let go of any emotional emotions that they had um, about the situation or about you. Um, but yeah, that's... Group 1, um, that's not exactly the most positive reading. I mean, unless you were hoping to hear that this person has moved on, in which case, they, I think they have, and <laughs> um, they seem to be doing well. So, um, yeah, pile one, that's the message that I have for you today. It looks like your person doesn't really think about you much, um, and when they do, it's just kind of like, you know, very matter-of-fact, like, yeah, I used to know that person, or I used to be with that person. It's whatever, you know? It's it's done. Um, it's just something that was. Um, so, uh, pile one, that's your reading. I hope this resonated with you, and I hope you enjoyed. Um, thank you for joining me today. I hope I see you next time, guys. Group two, let's take a look at your overall energy, I guess, for this reading. Uh, oh, okay. We have the Secret Admirer card. Someone has deeper feelings for you than they are letting on. So, right away, it seems it seems pretty safe to say that this person does think about you. But let's see what other cards want to come out first. Oh, we have Death. too many cards. Does group two's person think about them? We have the Wheel of Fortune, the High Priestess, interesting, the Knight of Swords, and okay, Knight of Swords, the Moon, and the Chariot. You got a lot of majors, guys. You got all majors except for one card. Um, so, I would say yes, this person definitely thinks about you. Um, it seems to me like you do have some type of history with this person. Uh, because we have the death card here. This is like transformation. This is change, um, something ending, and something new beginning as a result of that ending. Um... We also have the Wheel of Fortune, which is another card that speaks of change. It talks about cycles and um, luck, karma. Uh, it also can indicate, you know, um, fate, destiny, uh, divine guidance. And the High Priestess is here too. This is a, another very, like, spiritual card. Um, it's interesting, though, because the High Priestess and the Moon are here, and they both, um, both of these cards have elements of, like, the unknown. You know, they, they indicate something that is hidden, something that has not yet been revealed, um, or the illumination of something that was kept hidden, that was kept a secret. Um... The Chariot and the Knight of Swords and the Wheel of Fortune um, are indicative to me of, like, a desire to move forward, a desire to express one's thoughts and move forward 
in light of that. So I would say this is someone that, again, you know, I feel like you have some, okay, hold on. Okay. Okay. This is someone that you know, but I don't feel as if, I mean, obviously this is someone you know, whatever. Um, I don't feel though like this is someone that you've really been in a relationship with before, romantically. Um, this could be someone that you met not too long ago. Um, this could be someone that you work with, someone that you are friends with. Um, someone that you have some type of platonic relationship with. I'm getting that they want that to change. They want that to... They want this relationship to move into a different direction. They want to tell you how they feel. Um, and... <laughs> it's like, you know, with the moon and the high priestess and the knight of swords, you know, all of these cards are talking to me about some kind of revelation, you know, some kind of truth coming out. And I think what this truth is, is their feelings towards you. Okay. So like they think about you and that's what they think about predominantly when they are thinking of you. Um, and I feel like they think about you fairly often. Um, I don't think it's something that is on their mind like all day, every day, but when they... I think when when the possibility exists that they might see you or, you know, talk to you or run into you or something like that, that's when they think about this. Um, I feel like this person's trying not to get too attached to the idea of building something with you because they aren't totally sure what your thoughts are about them. Um, so they are definitely keeping their feelings under wraps, you know, they have deeper feelings for you than they are letting on. Um, but they want to move towards you, like, real bad. Um, the, I, I think that this person finds you extremely attractive and they feel very drawn to you. They, if this is the type of person who believes in soulmates, then they probably think that you are soulmates. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like... It, and <sighs> This could even be someone who, on the surface, doesn't appear to be interested in you very much, if at all. You know, I feel like that's how much this person could be um, keeping their thoughts to themselves. Um, so you might be wondering, like, how is this even possible? Because this person doesn't even act like they give a rat's ass about me. But what I'm getting from these cards is that that might be how they are projecting themselves. That might be how they present themselves to you as, you know, very logical, rational, unemotional. But their feelings go so much deeper than that. And they want to make a move. They want to move towards you, right? Um, for some of you, this could be, uh, for some of you, this could be a person that you were romantically involved with in the past. Now you're not, and they want to, they want another go at this. Um, for others of you, this is, again, like a, pl a platonic relationship that this person wants to take to the next level. Um, I'm going to pull out one of these oracle cards and see if there's anything else that they would like to add to this. We have Yin reversed. So, um, the yin card in the upright position is about surrender, right? It's about being, uh, actually, okay, let me back up. In the reverse position, this card is really about surrender. In the upright, it's about, um, receptivity, being open to change, open to receiving whatever spirit puts on your path. In the reverse position, this is about... Oftentimes it's a message that you need to be receptive, that you need to surrender um, to, 
you need to stop trying to exert so much control over a situation or, you know, just kind of let spirit take the reins. Um, as far as their thoughts go, I think that they, <clears throat> they may feel as if you are resistant to them. They might think that you are resisting them. Um, but they feel hopeful. They think that there is a lot of potential um, for this to go somewhere. And for that reason, they are very hopeful about the future. Um, even if you are not expressing a lot of interest, even if you... Even if you barely see each other, you know what I'm saying? I think this person is very hopeful that things can change between you and that things could go in a really positive direction. They just... It's like they're, they're thinking a lot about like how they're going to express themselves to you. It's like they're thinking about like what am I going to say, when am I going to say it, how am I going to say it, you know? Um, that kind of thing. That's the thing that's really like, that they're really turning over in their mind. Um, and again, they, they might think that you are a bit resistant or closed off to them, but not to the extent that, you know, they feel they don't have a chance. Does that make sense? Um, they think that... They might think that they can, you know, change your mind, or they might think that, hmm, hold on, give me one second, oh, oh sorry guys, <clears throat> it's like they, have I mentioned that have I mentioned that they find you extremely attractive? Because they do. Um, anyway. They... It's, it's like... From their point of view, they see you as being somewhat resistant or closed off. And that is probably why they have not expressed a lot of interest or really expressed how they feel towards you. Um, but they're hoping, they're thinking, you know, eventually you will let down your walls and let them get closer to you. They're very hopeful about that. That's something they are looking forward to. And I think they're keeping an eye on, like, they're, they're really closely, um, paying attention to your interactions. Keeping an eye out for a sign like an okay to like make a move. Does that make sense? Um, so pile two, short answer. Yeah, your person definitely thinks about you. They think about having a future with you. They think about telling you that they're really attracted to you and interested in you romantically and they have pretty deep feelings for you guys. Okay, so yes. Yes, they do think of you. Um, pile 2, that's your reading. I hope it resonated with you, and I hope you enjoyed. Um, these are just general, so uh, not everything is going to be applicable to everyone who watches. Take what applies to you and leave the rest. Um, and also keep in mind that the roles can be reversed for these readings. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for joining me today. I hope I see you next time. We are going to talk now about... Group three. So group three, your card is when you pass from this world, you take nothing with you but your soul and the memories you have shared with those you love. So, um, memories, memories, memories. It seems, okay, yeah. Um, right away, it's looking like this person does think about you in the sense that they have memories of you that they look back on. Um, but let's see what other cards want to come out for you, group three. Whoa. 
Okay, the lovers flipped over, but also all of these cards fell out, so uh, if it pops up again, I will take it. Group three. Does your person think of you? We have the Ten of Swords, oof, and the uh, Two of Cups. Let's see. That is way too many cards. Chariot, Four of Pentacles. Five of Pentacles, and Seven of Pentacles. All right, group three. Um, first of all, I want to say, similar to group one, I feel like this is someone that you probably don't have much contact with, if at, if any. Um, seems like you're in separation from this person, just based on how this feels, and. Yes, they do think of you. They reminisce a lot about memories that you made together. Um, they look back on times you shared very fondly. Um, they also... There's also a lot of hurt here. It's interesting because it seems like this person really wants to be a part of your life again, but for some reason they're not. Either they think that you would not be receptive to that, or there are some other circumstances that are preventing them from, you know, coming towards you. Not totally sure what that is. It's going to be different for everybody because this is just general, right? But, um... <sighs> This person definitely thinks about you because they miss you a lot. Um, Ten of Swords, this is pain, this is heartbreak, this is a painful ending. Um, the Two of Cups, this is unconditional love and union. And it's like, I feel like this person loves you a lot. And the the love that they have for you is almost painful to them. Because it's like they can't, they feel like they can't express it. They can't do anything with it. It just is in them, like just, you know, <sighs> bubbling inside of them. And there's there there's nowhere for them to direct it. With the Four of Pentacles, um, this person definitely... <sighs> has not forgotten about you. This person definitely has you on their mind quite often. This talks about connectedness. It talks about um, holding on to something, right? And it's almost like they are fixated on you to some extent. It's like they want something to happen here with the Seven of Pentacles and the Chariot. The Chariot is about movement, it's about overcoming obstacles to facing adversity, and the Seven of Pentacles is like an energy of waiting, of like figuring out your next step, of potential. Like there's nothing going on now, but there is potential for change or action in the future, right? Um, so this person absolutely thinks of you, and they think of you in the sense that, I mean, again, they reminisce a lot about the memories that they have of you, but they also think about their feelings towards you, which I feel are intense. Um, they think about, I think this person feels hopeful that the two of you could have some kind of future, but it's almost like they don't want to get too attached to that idea because there's still that doubt. There's still this feeling of doubt, like it may never happen. Or you might, you might start talking again, you might meet up again, but then something, something will happen that will cause you to go separate ways again. 
right? That's what the Five of Pentacles is telling me. So it's like, I think that they, they think about a lot of hypotheticals um, pertaining to you, like, uh, in addition to thinking about the past, they also think about uh, possibilities for the future, um, you know, being with you, loving you, being able to give you the love that they feel for you, moving forward with you in their life. Um, but again, they also have doubts about that. They have, you know, feelings of like, but what if that doesn't happen? What if I'm just deluding myself? Y you know, it's like, it's almost like they don't dare to be too hopeful for the future of this. Um, which is, it's, it's a sad energy that I get from this person, guys. And I know some of you are thinking, what is this person sad about? Why are they thinking this way? Like, they're the ones who walked away from me. That might be the case. If that is the case, they regret it a lot. <laughs> they regret, like, screwing up your relationship. Or screwing up, you know, whatever you had. You may not even have had a relationship. You might not have even gotten to that point. It could have just been that you were talking or, you know, casually seeing each other. But, um, there's, yeah. They, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I ran out of space on my phone and had to delete some stuff. Uh, but anyway, I'm back. We're back. Um... Everything's falling apart. Anyway, where was I? Okay, yeah, they think that they have missed this opportunity for, um, or, or they lost this amazing thing. This, this thing that they felt so happy in, or this relationship that they felt so good about. Um, and the co-create card... This card talks about manifestation, it talks about creating something, and this is really emphasizing, like, that, that what I was saying about how they think a lot about the hypotheticals, about possible futures between you and them, um, what could happen, you know, what, what's the potential, like, how, how could things change between us, you know, is, is there a possibility that we could be together someday, that they could forgive me, that, you know, whatever. Um, they think a lot about the possibilities there. So, um, Group three, that's what I have for you guys today. Uh, I hope that this resonated with you. This was kind of a sad one, uh, so sorry if it bummed you out. But um, anyway, take what applies to you and leave the rest. These are just general. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. I hope I see you next time. Finally, we have group four. So group four, like I said, you guys got two of these cards, and let's see, you have time, you are trying too hard, give it time, and we have manifesting miracles, your dreams, your dream is soon to become reality, trust your heart and continue to follow its guidance. So, let's see. Can I make these stand up so you can see them? Um, yeah, okay. So, what I'm getting here is that, right away, it looks like your person does think about you. Um, and I also get the impression that you are probably separated from this person. You probably don't have contact with them right now. Uh, you may not have had contact with them for some time. Because we have the time card. Let's see what other cards want to come out for you. We have the tower. King of Coins, The Fool, oh, guys, let's get a couple more, 
we have the chariot, the queen of swords. How about one more? Okay. Um, that's not, that's not one card. One more card. Okay. Or two, that's fine. We have the star and we have the world. <laughs> okay, guys. Group four, your person does think about you and specifically they think about having some kind of new beginning um, with you. We have the fool. We have the star, which talks about hope for the future. It talks about wish fulfillment, healing, and restoration. Um, the fool, of course, talks about new beginnings. We have the world card, which speaks of cycles. It talks about completion and wholeness, but, you know, with the completion of a cycle, we have, you know, there's always the beginning of a new one coming about. Um, chariot movement forward. Um, the tower card, this is major change. So I'm getting that your person does think about you. They think about having a new start with you. They think about kind of like starting fresh, starting over with a clean slate. They have things that they would like to tell you about. They have some stuff that they want to come clean to you about. The Queen of Swords, all the, all the court cards for the swords talk to me about communication and honesty. Um, so there is some, some stuff that they may not have been super forthcoming about in the past, but they want to communicate that, whatever that stuff is, to you now. Um, and they think about how you may react to it or may, may not react to it. Um, they, with the tower, they, they think about the circumstances of this situation changing. It's like they, I think that they want your relationship to be completely altered. So like if you're not in contact with this person now, if you haven't spoken in months or even years, um, they want that to change, right? They want that to change. They want to manifest you back into their life. I feel like that's what they're doing, uh, intentionally or not. Um, for some of you, they're doing it intentionally. For others of you, it's just you know, they're manifesting without realizing it. Um, in the King of Coins, you know, this talks about stability, it talks about security. They want to... You made them feel safe. You made them feel secure in some way. And they miss that feeling. They... Okay. When you had a relationship with this person, regardless of whether this was actually like a romantic committed thing or not, or if you were just talking or whatever, or friends, whatever the case is, um, you made them feel like they could be themselves. You made them feel like they didn't have to hide things from you. But this person may have been so used to hiding that they couldn't bring themselves to just put everything out there. You know what I'm saying? So, um, they miss that feeling because they don't really know anyone else that makes them feel that way. They, they see you, they think of you as someone that they can just be their authentic selves around. They can just truly be themselves and not have to be afraid of judgment or, you know, and that's really important to them because they don't have any other relationships where they feel like they can do that. I feel like they're, th this person, there is no one in this person's life that really knows everything about them. You were someone they felt like they could reveal everything about themselves too, but they were afraid to do that, so they didn't. Um, and then whatever happened between you happened, and now you're not really talking. 
Um, and so they miss you. They miss that feeling of security. Um, I think they, they ask themselves sometimes, is it really over between me and this person? Is it possible that we can meet again? Is it possible that we might talk again? And in that regard, this message is kind of similar to pile uh, or group three. So um, at the start of the video, if you felt, sorry, um, at the start of the video, if you felt drawn to um, group three at all, then you might want to watch that one too. Um, but it's like, is this really something that's done and over with? Or could it come back together? Could we have a new start? Might this person come back towards me? Could things change between us? Could I feel safe again? Could I feel like I can be my true self again? And so that's the kind of stuff they're thinking about here. It's, it's not so much thoughts they're having about you specifically. I mean, aside from the fact that, you know, obviously they felt connected to you to such an extent that, you know, they felt uh, like they could or like they wanted to be completely authentic around you. Um, but it's, it's not so much things they're thinking about you specifically, but it's things they're thinking about your situation, your connection, your relationship. Right now, it seems like they're just giving it time. They're just kind of taking it, taking things one step at a time, one day at a time, following their gut, following their heart, going where they're feeling led to go. And I think they know to some extent that eventually they're going to get to a place where they're going to want to reach back out to you, but they're not quite there yet, okay? They're moving, slowly but surely, and they're, you know, they're consciously aware of this movement. It's like... I'm, I'm taking baby steps here. It's like they're trying to work themselves back up, trying to work up the courage. They're trying to do what they need to do to feel confident enough to approach you again. Let me pull out one more oracle card for you guys. Let's see if there's anything that they would like to add. Serendipity. Serendipity. This person thinks that you met for a reason. And I think that they're aware that whatever the purpose was for your meeting, it wasn't fulfilled. It didn't come it didn't come about you know um, they left too soon or the relationship fell apart too soon and I think they know consciously that they are working their way back towards you that's that's kind of, um, that, it's like that's part of the plan. That's part of the long-term plan here. It's like this person, whoever this person is, it's like they're, they, they think about a lot of stuff. They, they're, they're like planners. They, they always, they like to try to plan ahead. And it's like they've created like a roadmap for their lives. And one of their destinations that they have already, you know, decided on is you. 
You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, group four, your person definitely thinks about you and they think a lot about starting over. They think a lot about approaching you. They feel optimistic about it, about the future. They think about the possibilities, but they also think that it may be a bit too soon. They're working their way there. Um, so, group four, that's what I have for you. I hope that this resonates with you, and I hope this gives you some insight into what might be going on. Um, these are general, so just keep that in mind. Take what applies to your situation and leave the rest behind. If something doesn't sound right, then probably isn't meant for you. Um, anyway, thank you so much for joining me today, and um, I hope I see you next time, guys. Bye!